Hello everybody, welcome to another Vintage Cube Draft where we have a Mox Ruby. Very good card to start. It's pretty funny to see Channel and Emrakul together in the same pack. This is a tale as old as time. Um, maybe not as old as time, but pretty old. There's also Mare Battlesphere, so a lot of good shenanigans there. I don't expect to wheel any of that, not too worried about it. We'll take the Mox Ruby. This pushes us slightly towards red and slightly towards aggressive decks, but I'm not going to worry about it too much. In terms of what we're passing outside of the Channel stuff, the only red card is Delayed Blast Fireball. Um, honestly, pretty weak pack outside of like Channel Emmer Cool plus the Mox, so we'll just take this and see what we get past. Okay. A few possibilities here. The most obvious one is just Season Pyromancer, which I think I probably am leaning towards here. It is one of the better cards in the pack and also a red card. Um, there's also Retrofitter Foundry. I do think that getting a couple cheap artifacts to start is really good because that sets you up for Urza Saga or Tinker, Tolarian Academy, um, to even like Trinket Mage or Urza. So that's not an unreasonable card to take. All three of these blue cards are fine, but not amazing. Um, and then Guy's Cradle is quite strong in the right deck, but I, I think I'm just going to take the Pyromancer here. Just take the good card in our colors, cut red. Okay, so worth noting we just passed a Raging Ravine. Now we see Stomping Ground. I do think red-green is a pretty solid color combination. That has not been true historically, but it is true now. I'm not going to take a Flare of Duplication this early. I do love a Nadu. It's fun to try to make this card work, but that doesn't seem great. Um, it just means we have to go into two additional colors. Spire Bluff Canal versus Stomping Ground is interesting. I think if it was a blue-red land, like a Volcanic Island versus Taiga, I would take the Volcanic Island. But given that this one's fetchable, I think I will take it. Noting that I just passed the Stomping Ground, maybe Stomping Ground wheels. If not, that kind of sucks because it likely means someone will try to cut our red-green stuff. But I think this is the correct pick here. I'm not too interested in like, you know, like Void Walker or like Selfless Spirit or one of these like mediocre two drops. Well, right after passing the blue-red line, we see Dak Faden. There's also, I mean, there's some pretty good green cards. Bristly Bill and Sylvan Library are solid. Um, late in Tomb, but that doesn't go too well with what we have right now. I might just take the Robber of the Ridge. It's not the most exciting card necessarily, but it is really good, especially good with Mox Ruby and if you have a low curve. Um, City of Traders is okay in some builds. doesn't seem like it's at its best here. Yeah, I'm just going to take the Robber of the Ridge. We're, we're pretty confident we're playing red. We're less confident in the other colors. Okay, a lot of good stuff here. Um, I'm looking primarily at the two red ones. This is a very strong card, but I think Fiery Confluence is still the pick. Like, yeah, I like this card a lot, especially because a lot of red-green decks don't really have that many ways to utilize their graveyard. Although, I guess that's less true with Bloodbraid Challenger now. Um, but yeah, let's just take Fiery Confluence. Really, really good card. Um high power level and interactive and does everything we want to be doing. Now we see Prismatic Vista versus Nissa, which is pretty close. Nissa's really strong. This is great as well, especially if we end up being a Ren and Six deck, but I think I will take the Nissa actually. Um, I know it's 5 mana. 5 mana is a ton in this format, but this just does so much. It generates so much board pressure immediately. It makes a bunch of mana. It goes straight to 6 loyalty. Territorial Kavu could get there. Vista's okay, but yeah, let's take the Nissa. Okay, I think I'll take the Seder Wayfinder now. I mean, a lot of blue-black in this pack. There is Xander's Lounge in case we want to pivot towards Grixis, which could be interesting. And Seder Wayfinder isn't necessarily at its best in red-green. Huh. But we already do have the Stomping Ground. I think I will take the Wayfinder. Now we see Life from the Loam. That's interesting. There's also Squee, which is pretty good with some of the stuff. Um, Loam is not good at all yet, I guess. It could get there. Or we could just take Waddle. Honestly, maybe Waddley, yeah, Waddley is, uh, is the right pick here. I mean, it's okay in red-green, and then if we're getting it early, like, we're missing out on this dinosaur. Um, but we can actually try to get a dinosaur. Like, red. this is the sort of deck that could just play some dinos, potentially. Yeah, we'll try it out. Okay, we wheel the Delayed Blast Fireball. We also see a Seeker's Chariot. So this is great. Looks like red-green is fairly open. Which one do we want to take? I love the Seeker's Chariot. I think it's very good, but we need some interaction. We don't have much cheap burn, so I think I'm going to take the Delayed Blast Fireball, although it's close. Nice. We wield the Raging Ravine. That's amazing, both because it's helpful for our deck, but also just good from a signaling perspective. 
Besager's good too, but let's definitely take this. Okay, I think I will take the Flare of Duplication. Let's see, it only sacrifices red cards, so we can't sack like a Seder Wayfinder. And it might not get there, but it's very good with both of these two cards. So, high upside. Well, actually, maybe we just take the Spire Bluff. Yeah, you know what? Let's take the Spire Bluff. Set us up in case we see like a Time Walk or we get some good wheels. Um, okay, Jetmere's Garden versus City of Traders. Kind of close. I think I'm going to take the Jetmere's Garden. It is very close, but the White Splash is potentially really nice if we see a late, uh, or if we see um, specifically Fourth Air Lingus. There's some other stuff we'd want to splash too, but Fourth Air Lingus would be really good. All right, so this deck is looking okay so far. The great weakness is it, it's relatively bad curve. We don't have any one drops. We need some. We don't have many twos as well. Um, with that being said, I will take another three here. I mean, this card is solid. Now I see the Kavu. I think Kavu is the pick over Kasali Pride Mage, um, which it may or may not get there. I would love for this to be good, though. Okay, well, there's another Mox. Really good pack. There's also Orcish Bowmasters and Verdant Catacombs. But I'll take the Mox. Even though it's not on color, it's a really good pickup, of course. Um, maybe we can wheel one of these two red cards. Not too interested in any of the green cards here. But yeah, Mox Sapphire is quite nice, of course. Wow, okay, so Ren and Six, Chandra, Ignoble Hierarch, and Wasteland all look really good here. We didn't take the Life from the Loam. I guess Ren and Six doesn't look that good yet. I think I might actually just take the Ignoble Hierarch here, actually. Really helps a lot to just get to these threes a little bit faster. Also, Exalted is pretty relevant in a deck that does care about aggression and attacking. Wasteland would be pretty nice as well, but without having, like, if I could take both of these two, maybe I would go for it. I guess we do have Seder Wayfinder and Pyromancer, which does make the Ren and Six better, but yeah, let's just take the, the Hierarch, and then maybe we can wheel the Ren and Six. Okay, so my computer almost crashed, lagged for a lot, and then I had, like, two seconds left and didn't even see what the rest of the pack was. Took a Lumberjack, which is actually really good here, so it probably was the best card. Um, but yeah, this enables turn two Nissa. But frustrating to have the lag, of course. Now we get a Fable, which is just great. Um, yeah, I'll take it over Tireless Tracker. This card is very, very strong. Hmm. We could try to get there on Omnath. I don't think I'm that interested in either of these red one drops. There's like Mistress Bobble. Mother of Runes is strong, but it's not really synergistic with what we have. Or like, I guess it just, it's hard to cast. Eh, yeah, pretty bad pack for us here. The red one drops are so much worse than the white one drops. Uh, well, actually, that's, you get Ragavan and Dragon's Rage Chandler, which are good. But, like, comparing Mother of Runes to Voldaren Epicure is just not even a competition. I'll speculate on the Omnath. I'm not going to play it right now, but it could get there if we end up splashing some colors. Like, if, if Territorial Kavu and Omnath, they're kind of a package. We'll, we're likely either playing both of these or neither. Okay, there's Tribal Flames, like Inspiring Vantage if we want to try to go deep with all the colors. I'm not that interested in like a Karn that just doesn't fit the curve very well. Um, honestly, I think Tribal Flames is actually the pick here. Could be Inspiring Vantage, but I, like it not being a land for the tri for the territory or Kavu is annoying. I'm going to take this, uh, this speculatively, but likely not going to end up playing it. Okay, definitely taking Flame Slash here. Elegant Parlor could be good if we try to go deep with this, but let's probably just try to be efficient and taking a cheap removal spell is just great. Rabble Master could be good as well, especially with the Moxin, but I really want to have a couple one mana burn spells. We do have Fiery Confluence and Delayed Blast Fireball, which go pretty wide and they're good if we're behind on board, but still, it's really, really helpful to have a couple one mana interactive spells. Wow, Super Late Taiga. That's a really nice pickup. Soul God Lantern would be a good sideboard card. I might play Faithless Looting, but definitely taking the Taiga. And then we might end up being able to cut the Jetmere's Garden. I would prefer not to play too many tapped lands here. Um, Raging Ravine, of course, has a lot of upside, but if we get like one or two more duels, we could definitely just run it with these. So I think the next one is our first pack, which had Ren and Six and Chandra. Right now, we have no fetches and no Wasteland, so Ren and Six is not at its best. It might still be okay, just with like... You know, we have multiple ways to loot to fill up the graveyard glands, like Pyromancer, Fable, Wayfinder. 
Um, Baskin Rootwalla is kind of interesting. I think we would want a little bit more to make that work, though. Pyrokinesis and Headliner Scout are both okay. Hmm, close pick. I think Pyrokinesis is the pick. It's definitely it's really, really good in some matchups. It may or may not make the main deck, but it, it will just be the best card in our deck a lot of the times. Okay, I'll take this. Kind of makes me wish I'd taken the other Root Walla, because like, then we could really build around the discard stuff. But with that being said, like we didn't take the Faithless Looting. I mean, turn one Faithless Looting, discard two Root Wallas is pretty sweet, and I will take it, but I don't think it's super likely to make the cut. All right, this is the pack that we missed before. We get to take a look at it now and see not too much for us. I'll, I'll take the Steam Vent speculatively. We'll play it if we get like a time walk. So we have two blue cards for the possible blue splash. But yeah, I think we're just going to go straight red-green almost definitely. Um, maybe we get a couple fetches here late. Ooh, well, that is the kind of card you want to splash. I'm going to take the Fire Covenant. We don't have any black fixing yet, but that's very, very good. Now we do see some black fixing, so I'll take that over these mediocre red cards. All right, so our curve is still a little dicey. We're light on the ones, but we do have essentially four accelerants now. Um, I would like to get to the point where we have like five or six or more just cheap removal. Mm, this has much higher upside. I'll, I'll take that. We have like outs to splash all the colors, but we're not planning on splashing anything unless we pick up a card that really pushes us in that direction. Whoa, okay, well, there's Ancestral Recall. That's the kind of card that does really force you in a direction. Do we want to try to splash that? We have no fetches, but we have three free blue sources immediately, and we could find some more. Alternatively, we could take Library, which is really good. There's also Commercial District and Birds of Paradise. I think I will take the Ancestral, though. It's just so incredibly strong. Um, yeah, yeah, let's take this. Library is a little worse. It would be awesome if we could wheel Birds of Paradise. We should be able to wheel at least some good green stuff from this pack, but Ancestral is the kind of card you want to splash for. Now we see a few possibilities. Um, Expressive Iteration will be fun. Broadside Bombardiers is good, but it's not good with our curve. I think we just want to take the Generous Ant here. We don't have a green-blue land, so it doesn't help us play Ancestral yet, but it does help us to... I mean, it can find Taiga, and then it will likely get become better fixing from there. Okay, Volcanic Island is pretty nice. Now that we are playing blue, almost definitely. Yeah, I'll just take this. Good pickup. We're not a Time Twister deck. We could try to become a Flage deck, but let's just take the Firebolt. We still want cheap interaction. Um, this card is very, very good. So do we want to try to get to Omnath now? I don't think so. Again, just without fetches, it becomes way worse. All right, I'll take a Tropical Island, though. The blue splash is starting to look pretty free, among other things now. This can make blue. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't think anything else is particularly close here. So... I still don't think I'm too interested in trying any other weird splashes. We, I'm fine just playing only one blue card and having that be Ancestral Recall. We have one, two, three, four, five... Six blue sources, plus if we play an island, we could even have Waddle, although we might not play an island. We also might not play this card if we don't get any, um, anything to, any, like, dinos. Okay, Arena of Glory is pretty good. I think I'd rather just take the Misty Rainforest, though. Yeah. Now we see, eh, nothing that I'm too excited about here. Might just take Embreath Shieldbreaker. Bonnie Paul is not very good. Um, Third Path Iconoclast is like weirdly close. But yeah, let's just take this. I mean, we have no way to scale artifacts right now. This is a good card that's going to be two for one pretty often. Copperline Gorge versus Magda. Endurance is also a really good sideboard card, but Magda actually would be quite nice here. But I think we're going to have plenty of playables. I think I'm just going to fortify the mana base even more. Yeah. Magda is good with like with the Moxon specifically, but still. I think this is good. Now we could take... Uh, we didn't wheel the birds or the six, which is too bad. There's Mishra's Research Desk, first commercial district. I think I like taking the district here. 
Um, it's actually our first surveil land, so it makes our Misty Rainforest and our Generous End a lot better. So we probably want to play like 16 to 17 lands, so we do need a few more spells. We have some stuff that we could play in the board, like Territorial Kavu. Honestly, it seems actually pretty good here, even if it's just a 3-3 three, three usually. Um, like a 2-mana 3-3 three, three that has a lot of other relevant text is pretty solid and it fits our curve well. Then the question becomes, do we want to play Jetmir's Garden? Which would give us a third tapped land. Three is not too many, but we do have a kind of low curve. I'm on the fence about that. Do we want to play Blazing Root Walla? Territorial Kavu gives us another way to discard it. So that gives us three total things. Ooh, okay, this is close. Sentinel of the Nameless versus Expressive Iteration. Iteration is a great card advantage card, but I think the Sentinel is kind of perfect for this deck. Yeah, really close pick here, but I will take the Sentinel. It's just like another beefy creature that pressures the opponent. Okay, that's interesting. Field of the Dead is actually a good card. I'm not going to play it in the main deck because it is really slow, but if we play against like slow, grindy decks, that's a good, good option. Ooh, are we ever playing Flage? No, I don't think so. Um, Anger versus Tarmogoyf. Honestly, Goyf looks pretty good here. It fits our curve well. It's like a beefy creature. I think that actually looks... Not, I mean, that's sort of the theme of this deck is just like under-costed, beefy creatures. And so Tom and Goyf fits that MO very well. There's a Valakut and a Shadow Spear and a Restless Vents, all of which are interesting. I don't think we're ever... Yeah, I'll take the Shadow Spear. Not going to play it in the main deck, but it's pretty good with stuff like Tom and Goyf in matchups where life gain is relevant. Uh, okay, never playing Scape Shift. Well, actually, you know what? I will take a Scape Shift. We could sideboard into Scape Shift Field of the Dead in certain matchups. So, I think... I think I like playing Tribal Flames and Jetmere's Garden. And then Six Basics. Yeah, I think that just seems like a solid plan. So, we can just do this. We'll see how that looks. This gives us a red 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. That's more than we need. For green, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. It seems good too. And for blue, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, Blue's a little dicier, but we only have... And, and then, yeah, I think this seems fine. All right, little red-green beatdown. No mints can boot, but still, looks like a really sweet deck, and I will see you in round one. All right, we get to be on the play for round one, and we have an incredible hand. Wow. <laughs> a lot of possibilities. I think I'm going to... don't. We don't have something to lumberjack out necessarily, so I'm just going to lead on turn one land, hierarch, ancestral, and their upkeep. Actually, well, yeah. Well, no, I'll Ancestral now. I don't think they have Force of Will. We don't... Oh, wow. Okay, that, I was going to say specifically if we find another Mox. Wow. Yeah, pretty solid turn one. Storm count is five. Honestly, screenshot worthy. All right. Mamma Mia, that was a sick turn. <laughs> All right, so how do we want to handle this? I think we could actually flip Waddley here. Is there any chance that's correct? I mean, sacrificing a land, but I think that's honestly fine. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to do this. It, it's definitely, like, we have plenty of lands, so the downside of, miss, of like, losing some lands is not that bad. Um, and this does just put a lot of stuff into play. Next turn we can play the Phoenix and start beating down.
played their land first, slight blunder, and they don't have, okay, so I don't know what they take here. They go for that, but they can't play it this turn. So just pass. Hopefully we can draw some spells. We can't, but still hard to feel too bad about this position. So what's that attacking for nine? Pass turn. So we get to search for a dinosaur, which we can cast any dinosaur in the format, but unfortunately we don't have any in our deck. Would be really nice to have like an Atali or something like that here. Oh, well that's a good draw. So we can pay for mana leak or something because we have all this stuff. Yeah, okay. Well, pretty solid performance from game one. I think if we draw two Moxen and an Ancestral Recall on turn one every game, we'll probably do pretty well. So they're playing like some sort of base green deck. I don't think we care about Shadow Spear here. There's an argument that it's okay, but I think I'm just going to run it back. We, there's also an argument to cutting one basic land, actually. Uh, yeah, you know what? On the draw, we should, should probably be playing Shadow Spear over the third forest. Okay, well, not quite as busted as our last one, and we're on the draw, but still, very good hand. I guess we do the same thing. I'm going to do a main phase. In case we find Mox Ruby plus a one drop, but we don't. So let's just pass back. Okay, they play Mox. We can deal with that, of course, with our Embrace Shield Breaker into Rex Age killing my Mox. Fair enough. This is basically like build your own Rex Age, it's also 2 1. Um, I think I'm going to play this. There's an argument to holding it to cycle, especially with a Seder Wayfinder, but getting the white source into play is kind of nice in case we find either Tribal Flames or Territorial Kavu. Spellseeker, do they have their own Ancestral Recall? Oh, Once Upon a Time, that's not very scary. Time to go if not the worst draw, but this turn we're just going to play the Nissa. Swing for four with Exalted, so they can't block profitably. And then we can play Tarmogoyf post-combat. That's actually really good. The next turn we can grow the Tarmogoyf with Seder Wayfinder. Man. I mean, we've gotten insanely lucky. We've drawn both of our mocks and Ancestral Recall both games. But when we do that, this deck is pretty good. <laughs> Once upon a time, hitting Lenore Elves, this Delayed Blast Fireball is going to be pretty solid. In fact, they're almost just out on board. Let's play the Seder Wayfinder first to um, try to grow our Tarmogoyf. And then, bolt. there's no sorcery in the graveyard yet, so firebolt their face, untap. This has got to be lethal, right? All right, well, back-to-back -back turn four wins, like, pretty handily. <laughs> that was um, one of the more dominant performances I've ever seen from any vintage cube deck, frankly. I, again, a lot of luck involved, but very satisfying start. See you in round two. All right, everything's coming up. Benny Hills, we win the die roll yet again. What?! No Ancestral Recall, only one Mox. Okay, this is pretty garbage, honestly, but we'll make the most of it anyways. Um, <laughs> I jest, this hand is insane. It may be worth, I guess it's our third best hand of three so far, but turn one, Robber of the Rich on the play, gonna get us a lot of value. Turn two, Sentinel of the Nameless City. No burn, but we're just gonna like, 
we don't need to respond to their stuff because we're they're gonna have to be responding to ours. We're just gonna be faster than them. Um, so so we're swinging. Hopefully we hit their mocks. Shifting woodland. Okay. Pass turn. Playing against another green deck. I'm gonna play my land first, just in case that anything weird happens, just to make sure we get this trigger. Eureka, <laughs> probably not gonna be playing that one. And the next turn we can start hitting for potentially like six plus. They don't do anything, all right. Let's map onto the robber of the rich. I'm gonna graveyard that here. Then go to combat, swing with both. We hit Beseju, all right. Gonna map onto this again. Finding land. And I'll do, I'll foretell this. There's an argument to just holding it. But first of all, I like clearing my hand for the robber of the rich. Second of all, we already have four mana. We're getting pretty close to being able to just cast it. I guess if they were to play like pest infestation here, we might want to be able to cast it just cast Blade Blast Fireball from my hand, but it seems like, well, there's probably no losing lines, frankly. They have Questing Beast. That is annoying. Actually, that kind of punishes us for putting the counter on the Robber of the Rich, because now neither of our cards have a good attack. Hmm, yeah, that's pretty bad. Let's see what we draw. Generous Ent. Okay, I'm gonna play Pyromancer, discarding the Ent and the um, Shield Breaker. Okay, do we want to attack with both? Let's hold off, let's just pass. Do they have to use their Ancient Tomb again and go to six? They do. Oval Nodology, okay. They don't really have any attacks with that because it doesn't have Vigilance. So they probably just hit us with the beast and then pass. So let's just take this four, untap. And then we have lethal if we find the land from Nyssa. Ah, not the land we needed, I guess. Um, I think I'm just gonna play Waddley, grab a basic, play this tapped and pass, and then just plan on killing them with the Delayed Blast Fireball next turn. And I don't think there's anything they could realistically have here that would win the game um, without Natural Order being in the format, or sorry, without Crater Hoof in the format. We could have attacked all out there to take them off of using the Ancient Tomb, but then we would lose two creatures. That just doesn't seem worth it. So playing against the Mono Green deck should be an interesting matchup. I don't think it's a matchup for any big changes here. Like, we don't really need Shadow Spear. We don't need... Like, Fire Covenant would be great if we could cast it, but it's going to be pretty hard to cast without any fetches or fetchables. I guess they could have the natural order here. Natural order, sack mystic, but again, no crater hoof makes this a lot better for us. They could get Atraxa. Atraxa could maybe win them the game. I don't think anything else would come very close. They need something with lifelink when they're at four life and we have this many creatures. Tyrone's tracker, okay. I'll just take this, this is fine. All right, and then there's, we don't even need to cast this, but I'll just, they, they know what it is, it doesn't give away any information. And it's pretty satisfying, kill all their creatures and put them to negative one. 
All right, so after a very broken start, they stabilized pretty well. I didn't know what they had, of course, but against the green deck, we should probably play around them having four fours with Questing Beast and Ultimate Oddity, both as pretty realistic cards for them to have there. So, lesson learned. Shadow Spear could help us just like have beefier creatures potentially, but I don't think that's really the game we want to be playing. Unless we're supposed to cut a land on the draw. With Generous End plus two things, that actually seems like it's probably fine. And like, well, maybe we don't have that many creatures that are great with this though. Huh. Let's try it. I'm not positive that this is correct, but I think Shadow Spear, I mean, we have a lot of pretty beefy creatures. Um, it makes it a lot easier to race something like a Questing Beast. And I just don't think we need the land too badly. With Ant plus Mox, two Mox in this gives us 19 mana sources, not counting Lumberjack or Ignoble Hierarch, and we don't even have that high of a curve. On the play, I still like having a lot of lands. Um, like, you know, when we have Raiding Ravine and, and whatnot, but... On the draw, I don't think it's as necessary. We're pretty likely to have a piece of power in our opening hand almost every game when we have three in our deck. Okay, not the best hand ever, but definitely a keep. We have an answer to their turn one, dude. I do want to leverage my Ancestral Recall in such a way that I don't have to discard the hand size, ideally. Flame Slash is a nice removal spell against their deck in that it kills their 4-4s, four, four fours, but I, I'm still going to Bolt the Bird if they play one. And they do. I'd rather draw Firebolt, though. Ooh, interesting. <laughs> so that's bad with, um, with these two lands, but still just going to lead on this. Then we can play next turn Tropical Island. We obviously want to make sure we don't blunder and play the Copperline Gorge. So we'll get the Tropical Island into play first. So this will give us blue green, and then we can get white red from this finding Jetmere's Garden. So uh, Territorial Kavu will quickly become a 4 4. Might end up just looting away the Copperline Gorge at that point, which is fine. Lotus Petal, all right. We'll see what they power out with that. Oh, all right. If they play Questing Beast, I'll certainly regret having played the Flame Slash, although they just passed. That's interesting. Let's just drop the Kabu. Don't know exactly what they're up to. They might have ways to kill it. We haven't seen it yet. They're about to pain painfully spin the top. Whoa. Oh, Tinker, huh. All right, they take your and, ancest and uh, natural order. That's a little scary. We'll see what they put out there. We don't have a good way to kill an artifact right now, though. Blight Seal Colossus. All right, I think that is pretty much unbeatable for our entire deck. Let's play Ancestral Recall, I guess. Good to know about that. Do we have any outs in our 75 to Blight Seal? No, we do not, other than just trying to race. We don't have anything on the board either that would help us, so yeah, that's just, uh, that's tough. Red green is not a good color combination for dealing with Blight Seal. We're gonna have to go to, uh, to game three. But all right, so weird game there. Tinker for Blight Seal is pretty bad for us. Let's cut the Shadow Spear, bring in Forest, unless we want to bring in Blazing Root Wallow. Honestly, I'm going to do that. Just try to be aggressive. Um, yeah, Tinker is a big problem. If we can't interact with it at all, we just need to try to win quickly enough that they can't do it. Um, not, a, not a great spot, though. It, it's As someone who has historically played a lot of blue and white, I've never been afraid of Blight Steel, but it is pretty scary against this deck. On the play, let's go. Uh, I mean, yeah, I'll definitely keep this hand. Turn one Sentinel of the Nameless City is pretty good. Backed up with multiple removal spells to clear the path. This is actually kind of exactly what we want. 
They probably won't be able to kill the Sentinel, and then we'll be able to kill their stuff. So this will be the biggest creature on the board. Um, if they have, like, turn two Tinker, we will lose, but they need something pretty, pretty powerful, like, along those lines. Turn one Ancient Tomb into an artifact is bad. Oh, okay. Interesting draw. Let's start with a map here. Graveyard the Generous Ent. I'm just gonna firebolt this, I think. Do not wanna let them have Tinker available. And we'll hit for four. There's an argument to holding Flame Slash too, or uh, Flame Slashing instead of Firebolting because Firebolt can go to the face. It's, it's actually pretty close, but I think this is better. All right, tap Steam Vents and pass turn. So down to 14. We have six points of burn, of course. This Ancient Tomb will be a big problem for them. Simic Growth Chamber, okay. Probably just firing off Fiery Confluence to deal six to the face this turn. Oh, wow. Okay. All right, I'll grave out the Pyrokinesis and then just doom them for six and then should be able to close this out pretty quickly from here. Unfortunately, Tribal Flames does not deal four yet, but we have the Firebolt, so between those two, that is enough to kill them. They're also, they can't do their Ancient Tomb. We can beat a Blight Seal pretty easily at this point. I guess if they, like, land zero mana artifact, like Tinker for Blight Steel, we wouldn't be able to kill them this turn, and they ta maybe if they had a Counterspell as well, they could get there, but all right. It looks like we all are able to take it down. They had the Tinker, so they would... I guess they didn't have a turn two because they didn't have the blue source. Um, uh, but yeah, all right. Well, interesting match. Uh, loss of Light Seal, but this deck is just continuing to cruise. Do we want to just go down to 16 lands? Yeah, I think we should probably just make this exchange in general. I'm going to go for the... Root Wall over the Shadow Spear is kind of close, but the Root Wall is honestly a pretty good threat. It's like a, it can attack as a 3-1, and this is, it's, essence, it's an aggressive deck. We have, um, you know, we can play like a ramp deck sometimes, but we're trying to be really aggressive, have creatures that are cheap that hit hard. Um, this swings even harder with the Hierarch. I think that's just where we want to be. We do lose the Die Roll. That's unfortunate. We also have no power, but I'm not going to mulligan this hand. I, I think this is a deck that can afford to mulligan pretty aggressively, but... This hand is solid. I, I think it is a keep. Don't love seeing turn one Ancestral. Do love seeing turn one Lumberjack, though. We might not end up cat even using it on... Well, we'll see what they do. Turn two, Robber of the Rich plus Fable does seem pretty nice. Robber of the Rich is specifically good against Library, too. Snuff out my dude, okay. Um, Do you rather play Goyf or Robber of the Rich here? I think I'm going to get the Robber down. It is going to start getting value immediately. Um, it just gives us like more chances to hit something relevant. Luminarch Aspirant, okay. Do they have a clean answer to this Robber of the Rich? Keep in mind they're at 14, we have 6 points of burn in hand, plus a lot more burn in the deck. Shield or Edict to kill my thing, fair enough. Let's play Fable now. We're going to likely be looting away this Detective's Phoenix, and then bestowing it at some point down the road.
a Johnny. Okay, that's kind of annoying. That's definitely annoying. Okay, let's discard these two. Mm. Interesting spot. So if we attack with the goblin, they can just flip their Johnny. Which isn't great, but what's our plan for actually winning? Like if we just take a turn off, that doesn't seem very good. I think I'm gonna let them flip their Johnny as, as awkward as it is. But I do like the idea of making a treasure token here. So swing for three, they're gonna chump block, then flip their Johnny. And we're going to get our Goyf into play. Play this tap and pass. And then next turn we can go Fiery Confluence plus Bestow the Phoenix. And that should be, if not lethal, pretty close to it. It could have an instant speed removal spell, of course. We could also give our, uh, our Fable haste, funnily enough. That I don't think that's going to be correct here, but we'll see what they do. I hope they tap out for something irrelevant, although I don't know what five mana things would be irrelevant here. Vindicate my Tarmogoyf, okay. And Tidehaller Scholar take the Confluence. That's a pretty strong line. Actually, that's really good, because now we can't bestow evidence this. We're one mana short. It's actually a, a really big deal. Flame Slash is a pretty terrible draw, but it does let us bestow the Phoenix. Which I think is correct, so gonna go land, Flame Slash the Mother of Runes. They're gonna tap it to give itself protection. Then we can give one of our things flying in haste and hit them for five in the air, or kill a Johnny. All right, I mean, this gives us a, a, definitely a chance. We get to them for five. We're killing them fairly quickly. I think I'm just going to ignore the Ajani and go at their face. Um, if we can ever take the title of Scholar off the board, of course, that speeds up our clock significantly. Or if we just find another burn spell. I mean, Firebolt would be lethal, or would mean that, that like, it's basically lethal. They have three cards. They can keep making two ones, but our life total is pretty high. Pretty nice that they don't have a red permanent. That would make this a Johnny a lot scarier. Glimmerland's not too worried about that either. Really, I'm just trying to hope they don't find a flyer. They're dead in two attacks. Ah, that is bad because it has protect that has protection from red. So that is like it is quite bad. I think we're pretty dead here now, unless we top deck like multiple burn spells in a row. That is probably the best possible. That is probably worst possible. <laughs> Milling over two moxen. Um, let's swing for five. I think we're just, I don't think there's really a way for us to win though here, unfortunately. Even if we were to copy our Seder Wayfinder, 
and mill over a firebolt. We could kill the mother of runes, but then they could just bring it back. I guess we could kill the title of Sculler. But we wouldn't have enough mana to cast the thing this turn. I'm just going to play this tapped and pass for this turn. But I, yeah, again, I, I don't think there's really a path to victory here. Mother of Ruins is just too brutal, honestly. It means we can never really attack, and they're not quite low enough for us to burn them out. There probably was a different line we could have taken at some point that would have won the game, but... Um, yeah, I mean, the, the brutal turn was the, the title of Scholar taking our Fiery Confluence. That that was pretty rough, so they copy that, or kill that. In response, we're going to copy our Seder Wayfinder. Pyrokinesis is pretty nice with um with the Phoenix. Palace Jailer. I mean, yeah, I think there's not really outs from this position. Mother of Ruins is just so brutal. Completely, like, ruins combat. You can never, ever win with creatures if they have mother or removal spells. I'm not going to concede here, but I guess, well, do we, what are, do we have any outs? Because if we actually have no possible outs, I will concede. Oh, I guess fire, uh, Delayed Blast Fireball, that's our out. We haven't milled over that yet. Frustrating lag, but it's okay. Um, but yeah, Delayed Blast Fireball is our out. That would actually win us the game almost immediately, and, you know, we have only 14 cards in the deck, so it's not that unlikely to find. Pyromancer is a good draw. Have we gone through our Surveil Land? No, so I'll keep the fetch. Okay. Um, I guess I'll just play the Generous Ent. Oh, I'm trying to decide if I want to use the Surveil Land here, and I think the answer is yes. We'll still have enough mana to do what we want next turn. Can this deal damage to our face? Okay, yeah, so they can just do me for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 damage. That is quite a lot. But we're honestly in an okay... So we get... I guess we get two looks, and we have a, and there's 11 cards, so not that good, because they can kill us in two attacks pretty easily here, or two turns. I don't think we have any more card draw either, so we just need hope that between our Surveil we, and our other thing we get there. Pyromancer, yeah, I mean, our, our card draw is Pyromancer, Fable, Ancestral Recall, I mean, Jetmir's Garden Cycles. I don't think we have other card draw, though, no, like Escape to the Wilds. Quadley would be decent, but not that good. Ent down. Are they going to finally start attacking? I'm going to go for some blocks here. I actually want my detective to my Phoenix to die, I think. Okay, in response, I'll crack this. So tribal flames wouldn't get there. Yeah, it's pretty much... I mean, our, our deck is actually pretty stacked at this point, but I've, it's delayed Blast Fireball or, or Bust. We get two looks. 
Territorial Kavu, not going to do it, so we'll Graveyard. We might not be dead on board, though, especially if they continue to play conservatively, which they have been doing all game. Hopefully we just draw the Fireball here, though, and then we win. We can't cast it in our turn. We'd have to do it in their uh, in their upkeep. That's just the way the Fortel works. No luck. Okay. So... Oops, I need to make sure I get some green here. Okay, so I'll go red, untap. We're a little constrained on red mana here. But I think we'll be fine. Um, so let's go Season Pyromancer. And then crack this food token. And then do we care about the Detective Phoenix? I don't think so. Yeah, sure, whatever. All right, crack this, pass turn. Like we could have put the Phoenix in the play, it doesn't change our clock or anything. Um, if they just swing all out, they should be able to kill us here. Um, especially because they can hit us for 8 with the Ajani. And then they have multiple things that are essentially unblockable. But hopefully they just like play it slow and like target our Nyssa and we get another look at finding the Late Blast Fireball. No, they do just go at our face. So if they attack with everything, block, 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 block. So we're not actually dead on board. And therefore they can't attack us. If they, if they attack us, they would die on the backswing. So we get at least one more turn, um, one and eight. Um, at this point, it's unlikely. There was a lot of draws where we were favored to hit it, especially when we had a couple more, more turns. But now that we're up against the wall, it's pretty much now or never. Delayed Blast Fireball. I like that we do have an out, of course. So we go to eight. They also have tons of cards. We die to Reprieve. They take out our Nyssa. That's fine. We still have eight mana. Right? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep. That doesn't matter. All right. So can we get it? One and eight. Twelve and a half percent. Boom! Okay, that's sick. It's definitely not game over, but looking pretty solid. So, we could have cast it just for two now. Which would be interesting. In fact, maybe that was the right line. They would only have one creature survive. They would have Mother of Runes, of course. Was that better? They would save. They would have to save their Tide Hollow Sculler. Then they have two blockers back. They would go to seven instead of four, which is of course a big difference. But oh, they give. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Um. If they went to seven instead of four, save the title of Scholar, they have two blockers back, and they would have this would st still be in place, so they could block our thing that we Phoenix. So I think that that would not have done it. So we took the right line. I should have thought about it for a little bit longer, um, but we're in a pretty good spot here. I mean, they have this. They can. I guess they can hit us for four or for three. That puts us to five. I don't think they can kill us from that though. They can replay something from their graveyard, but nothing has haste or anything. And then this fiery confluence is lethal on its own, so they have to deal with that. But if they bring back the Sculler, they're like not going to find a way to put a red thing into play. They replay the clearing. That does gain them two life, but that still doesn't beat the fiery confluence. 
And it's also just a sign of desperation. They only crack that up there if they don't have another answer. This would be a crazy game to win. Our opponent could have won so easily, too, if they had not played so conservatively. In their defense, they didn't know we had the late blast fireball, but that is one of the only cards that would get them out of that. And <laughs> we get there. Oh, my God. Yeah, we should not have won that game. Also, very kind of them to show us that they were playing Wrath of God. And also just weird. They're like a base. They're like a creature deck. You don't normally play Wrath of God in those decks. Okay, do we want to make any changes? Fire Covenant would be amazing. It might even be so good we splash it with just a couple basic swamps. Let's see, if we were to play Blackleaf Cliffs in one basic swamp, that would give us one, two, uh, one, two, three, four sources plus Seder Wayfinder to dig. I wish I had like a black green fetchable land off of this generous end because this is really, really good, but we have a couple. I think we just keep the main deck. Although maybe like, you know what? No, Blazing Rewall just sucks. It's never going to be good here. I think this is correct. Um, are there any other cards we want to cut? Robber of the Rich doesn't seem that good. Especially on the draw. Although it is better when we have a Moxon. So let's cut that. Let's play one basic Swamp so that we can fetch it up. Off of the Waddley. I think I'm just going to cut another forest here. We still have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten green sources. Yeah, we'll run it like this. Interesting situation, but I think Fire Covenant is really good here, especially against an opponent that's demonstrated that they play very conservatively. They weren't really protecting their life to it, they're playing Wrath of God. They're not going to be playing this like they're an aggressive deck, even though I think they should. Okay, a lot of burn here. I will keep it. We have two of our black, we have both of our black sources. Oh, okay. This is definitely a hand that's quite weak to library. In general, I'm happy to see library. I don't think that's a very good plan in, in, in Vintage Cube in general, honestly. This has gotten much worse over the years, but this is the sort of game where it, where it does look good. Um, okay, I'm just going to grab the, the, we'll just get all the colors here. Jetmere's Garden, now our Tribal Flames is max powered. Jenner Sense also another card that's really nice with Detective's Phoenix. So let's play their land first. It would be hilarious if they don't have a land. Okay, they do. High dollar scholar, not too worried about that. They should probably take the Phoenix. There's an argument to taking Flame Slash though. Okay, let's just play that first. This is going to be a pretty tough game to win, though. So we'll see what they have. They just have a clean way to deal with the Sentinel, and they can just keep the board clear. Yeah, that's kind of worst-case scenario. So this turn we're going to go Phoenix and then use crack the map on it. I don't think I care about Lumberjack in this spot. If they have Swords of shares, it's really bad. Cedar Wayfinder, I'll Graveyard that. Hit for three. That's first blood, though. I don't like that they still have such a high life total. If they kill this, then it's not too bad, because any creature we draw, we can just give plus 2-2 two, two flying haste. I guess we shouldn't be F6. There is a world where we pyrokinesis soon. Creature of the Schism, okay. Okay. 
So this will make one lunge with lifelink if we have the most life. Uh, that's kind of annoying. Might go pyrokinesis to kill the... Okay, I'm, okay. Now, we, now we definitely go for the pyrokinesis line. So let's untap. Ooh. Okay, Ancestral Recall targeting ourselves. That was not good draws, jeez. We'll go Pyrokinesis. Um, three and one. Pitching the Lumberjack. Get back our Flame Slash, slash their dude. Tap land, hit for three and pass. Yeah, I mean, drawing triple land there is tough, especially after we cut a land from our deck. Um, or uh, we're only playing 16 lands. But if they only have ways to kill Detectives Phoenix instead of exile it, we could be okay. Because again, any creature we top deck, if they kill this, with Pyrokinesis, and we can bring this back three times already. This is Removal is never going to be good against this. Hopefully they flash back immediately. They know about the fiery. Okay, that's pretty pretty poor play. Just letting us get free value off of this thing. It won't matter if we just only draw mana sources though. So one damage to each creature, four damage to each opponent. Gonna hold this to discard to a season pyromancer. They're down to seven, but we're also lost our fiery confluence. Glimmerland's not too worried about that. A Johnny, not too worried about that either. I mean, they have a decent board presence now, but if we get to put them to four in fly with flying, which means delayed blast fireball or firebolt would be lethal. And also, we have a lot of other good draws. Nissa, Loki, not a good draw. I don't want to let them flip their Johnny when they have a red creature in play. So I'm just going to hit them for three and pass. Eh, it probably is correct to uh, to play Nissa actually. But just not use it. Or not like attack it with it. Funny game. It still feels like we're behind, but maybe, I mean, it just depends on what they have in their hand, I guess. They do take out the Phoenix. That is quite bad. We have several draws that just win. We also have Tribal Flames, actually, so three burn spells would just be lethal immediately. Um, and then we have Fable and Pyromancer, which would let us dig towards those things. We'll see how they attack here. If they attack. I definitely don't want to kill their cat warrior token. If they flip the Ajani, that would be a disaster. But that means like if they attack with the cat plus the rebel, we they get to draw a card off the glimmer lens, but then we can just eat the rebel and attack back with two three threes, which they are essentially must block creatures. They're off of library now. At least almost definitely. Okay, Nissa down. Do they want to send in the Rebel? Feels like they should not be attacking here. I know I last game was roasting them for being too conservative. Maybe they actually are supposed to attack. Oh, brutal. That's frustrating. Okay. Land go. Some pretty brutal mana flood. And I hate that this is exiled too. If it was, if like they had to kill it instead of exiling it, we could just bring it back and hit them for lethal with this copper line gorge. Fire Covenant would be a pretty good draw here as well. Parallax Wave, okay. So we can never win with creatures. How much they hit for two, three, four, five, six, seven. So they're dead we're dead in three attacks. We get two more draws. Man, after getting so close, this would be a tough one to lose. Okay, now we're dead in one. Th th we're dead after this. So, gotta, gotta rip it this turn. Pyromancer, Fire Blast, or Delayed Blast Fireball, Tribal Flames, Fire Bolt. Fire Covenant would no longer do it. 
Pretty funny. All right, so frustrating game for sure. That was just, I mean, we just lost single-handedly to Mana Flood. Two draws away. Um, oh, well. We're on the play for game three. Do we want to make any changes here? does seem like Flyers are a big deal. Maybe we do, do just want Shadow Spear to try to win with our Flyers, but it's just pretty awkward. I, I don't think that's correct. Do we want to play another land on the play? Honestly, Lumberjack does... No, no, let, let's just try to be as explosive as possible, actually. Lumberjack's not at its best here, but I think it's still correct to play it. I'm not going to go for Field of the Dead here. Man, painful game to just draw. I mean, we drew Nyssa, which was kind of just a brick, and then other than that, we just drew, like, land, land, mox, land, mox. <laughs> okay, we can keep this. I'm actually not going to play, and no, I will play the Hierarch on turn one. This is like kind of a glorified burn deck, so just hitting for one is actually relevant. Um, also gives us the possibility of casting one of these later, but I don't think that's what we want to do. Dark Ritual, whoa. Okay, that's great news for us. So we'll just Flame Slash, Surveil, hit for one pass. Ooh, okay, good draw. Um, do we want to attack for one or use the map? I think I'm going to attack for one. Yeah, I think one damage is honestly pretty relevant here. And we don't need to worry about mana tithe or anything like that. I think there's a good chance they have Shieldra's Edict, which is not that good here. Or they have nothing. Tide Hollow Sculler. All right, they should take the Fire Covenant here, probably. And it doesn't really matter, I guess. Detective's Phoenix, good draw. So let's start by doing, or, hmm. So it would be pretty sweet if we could mill over an expensive card and then put the Phoenix on the Sentinel right away. And playing the Phoenix only puts one more power on. So, all right, I'm going to start with this. Best case scenario is graveyarding like an Ent. We don't get there. Okay, so that's fine. Then we'll just play the Phoenix. Swing with both. Play the Raging Ravine and pass. Raging Ravine was not a bad pickup. If they have White Source Parallax Wave, it does slow us down a lot. Whoa, that is definitely a sign of weakness. Jeez. Pitching Lingering Souls, okay. It is a 5-5, so it stops our Sentinel unless we can put a counter on it here. We could also animate Raging Ravine. Hmm, kind of an interesting spot. So, okay, let's go through the, th the options. We could just put the counter on the Texas Phoenix, hit them for three to four in the air, or we could animate Raging Ravine, try to put a counter on it, which would grow it to be a 6-6. Six, six. But then they just still, it's, it's just a trade, that's not that good. We could also put the counter here, and if it is a non-creature, then it becomes 4-5, and then we attack. And I would be fine trading Sentinel with a Carnage Interpreter. So if it's a spell on top, I think putting the counter on Sentinel is the best. If it's a, if it's a land, it, I guess it doesn't matter. So either way, we should put it on the Sentinel. Yeah, I think that's correct. Season Pyromancer. That is not a bad draw. In fact, let's, yeah, let's keep that. So no, I won't put that into the graveyard. Go to combat, swing. If they want to double block, 
kind of close which one we want to take out. We could even just play Delayed Blast Fireball, actually. Although I kind of want to save the Fireball to deal with their Lingering Souls. Yeah, I think I'll just let the trade go through. Just trade with the Carnage Tyrant. Yeah, let's just accept this. Um, and then go land, foretell, pass turn. And now it's protected from any shenanigans. They can't thought seize it or whatever. Okay, they crack a clue. That's not surprising, but it is good. Yeah, I think this is looking, it's not over over, but it's it's pretty close to over. With them just being so low on resources. They just crack another clue, that's great for us, of course. If they flashback souls, that's not bad. It's almost tempting to block here. But let's just take the two. Weird. Okay. All right, I'm just gonna take this opportunity. To, yeah, that I think that's a very strange plan um, to just play it so slow. I guess they're just gonna crack the clue, but we don't have to play the delayed last fireball now. Yep, they crack their clue. We'll just take our card draw. Not very good. No, I won't put that into the graveyard. Hit for four. And now, I mean, yeah, there we had there, that puts them to eight. We had nine points or uh, eleven points of burn already, so that game was a uh, very over. All right, this deck was awesome. We did lose two games, um, which feels a little surprising just given the power level, but this was like kind of perfect. I mean, so much quick acceleration to come out of the gates fast, so much cheap burn to clear the path, lots of burn to go at the face, including some that goes pretty hard. In the end, this actually would have been a really good deck for the red flare. I haven't played with that card before. But um, with like, the best thing to copy is probably, I mean, either Fiery Confluence or Delayed Blast Fireball is like an instant win. Um, but it's also, I mean, it's really good with Tribal Flames too. That gives us a lot of ways to just burn them for 10 damage straight to the face. Um, also copying Pyrokinesis is fine. Um, I mean, yeah, just a really sweet deck, honestly. Ancestral Recall, um, Sentinel put in a lot of work. The Burn Spells put in a lot of work. Fable and Pyromancer were good card draw. Um, yeah. Honestly, no real complaints. I mean, I guess I wouldn't mind. Like, just there's a few upgrades we could have made. You know, like if cut like Quadley and Seder Wayfinder for Ragavan DRC. Like maybe one or two more cheap burn spells and not playing Bra Blazing Rootwalla. Like Minsk and Boo would be great, of course. Like this wasn't the perfect build, but it was really, really strong, and we got the trophy. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.